Hi there, welcome back. My name's Aston. I'm the general manager at Cellar Wine Shop in Lyon C, and I'm here today to introduce a fantastic vineyard, Chateau de Coin. Now, here in the cellar, uh, we're big fans of their collection. We stock the entire range. Um, they're a beautiful winery based down in Provence in the south of France, and they've been making really gorgeous, bone-dry French rosés for a very long time. But the defining moment in their history really came about in 2006, when the vineyard was bought by an eccentric Bordeaux billionaire, Sacha Lachine, and he puts his name on the bottle. Um, in the world of wine, colloquially, we know him as Mr. Pink, because he's, he's quite well known for wearing a pink suit and having a pink Bentley and a pink uh, yacht, and now, of course, a pink vineyard. <laughs> um, but he uh, he did something quite amazing with the brand. He, he gave it an English name, which was, of course, quite unheard of, quite blasphemous in France, and they ostracised him a little for it, I must say. Um, but he sure proved them wrong, because he exported it out to the USA, and it exploded in popularity. At the time of recording, Whispering Angel, which is the brand's flagship wine, is actually the most popular wine in the United States of America that isn't made domestically in the United States of America, and that's a huge accolade. Um, so uh, today I can talk you through the collection itself. Uh, the Palm is their entry level wine. So this is the one they market to the slightly younger crowd. It's a little bit sweeter, still a dry rosé, so the Provence. But that one you're gonna get a lot of red fruits, little bits of sweetness nuance throughout. Really good entry level wine, that. Then of course you step up to the Whispering Angel itself. Um, this is their flagship wine. They make millions and millions of bottles a year. Um, you move up to the Rock Angel. These two I'm going to go into a little more detail in a moment because we're going to taste them, or I'm going to taste them. Uh, the, the Rock Angel is a, a much more exclusive wine. They only make 200,000 bottles a year of this, um, so it's, it's considerably rarer. And this has just been taken on at the time of recording, just uh, just a couple of weeks ago, by the Ivy as their house rosé. They're charging some ludicrous amount of money for a small measure, but but we've got it on a very good offering here. Uh, then we move up to the Chateau de Clon Cote de Provence uh, Estate Reserver. Uh, this is a very, very traditional wine. It leans heavily into the uh, vineyard's heritage and how they used to, uh, and their old ethos of how they used to make wine. Uh, and then finally we move up to the Le Clon, and the Garousse. The, these are really elite tier wines. The Garousse is actually one of the best rosés in history, according to uh, Wine Spectator and, and various wine reviewers. Um, wonderfully complex. You'll have all of the red fruits and the strawberries and the light citruses of orange and lemon, but, but unlike most rosés, what you'll get in there is a, is a distinct woodiness, kind of oak and, and, and really mature nuanced flavours that you just don't find generally. So a wonderful, wonderful wine, but uh, has a price tag to match, I must say. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, we're going to do a little bit of the tasting notes with the Whispering and the Rock. Uh, and I'm a very lucky boy because I don't normally get to try them side by side, but I do today. <laughs> okay. So first of all, we're going to start with the Whispering Angel. This is uh, the, the flagship wine of the, of the vineyard. And uh, it's got this wonderful, wonderful coloration to it. So let's start with that. Let's pour a little out. Beautiful. Now, we can see immediately that it's it's quite light in body, actually, as is normally the case with Provence, but of this kind of caliber. It's, uh, it, it's very peachy in its coloration um, on the nose. The nose is actually quite subtle. It's, uh, it's not a big explosive perfume by any means, but there's definitely, definitely strawberry, a little bit of currant fruits, perhaps. And it's floral. It's actually quite floral. Rose, rose petals. It's a lovely, lovely smell. So, uh, with with the, with the scent in mind, what happens when it touches the tongue? It's actually got a much more fulfilling mouth feel um, than than you would expect. It's 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 actually got quite a good density to it. And again, it comes through with all these red berries, luscious, luscious red berries. But also then I can feel this acidity kicking in, a really good crisp acidity that leans into white stone fruit. So sort of peach, maybe a little bit of pear even in there. It's, uh, it's lovely, lovely and refreshing, beautiful quality wine that, very happy with that. But 
Not is usually the case, but I get to actually taste it against its big sister, the Rock Angel. Now, the Rock Angel, unlike the Whispering, isn't made of a blend of five grapes. Instead, it's only two. One of which is the Vermentino, the originally the Italian grape, the Roll, as the French call it. And uh, for connoisseurs among you, you would know that the uh, the Vermentino grape is quite difficult to grow. It's, it's quite susceptible to a lot of things. So the yields tend to be a little lower, and it makes it quite expensive. Um, this is a considerably more expensive bottle of wine than the Whispering in terms of the, the vineyard's price points in it. Um, but it leans into a different market as well. So as we can see immediately, if we compare the colours, this one's definitely got a little more orange to it than the, than the Whispering. It's also clearer. It's also clearer. But this is slightly stronger, whereas the Whispering Angel 2019 is only 13.5%, uh, the Rock Angel 2019 is 14%. So it's got a good bit of alcohol to it, which I tend to like. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on from the colour and let's, let's see what the nose has got on this one. Wow. Um, far more complex. Far, far more um, going on in that, in that glass, for sure. It's quite herbaceous, actually. Um, which isn't necessarily something that I've picked up before when I've had the Rock Angel, but certainly I do when I compare it to the Whispering. Again, you've got all of those floral elements, all of the red fruits, but definitely these more nuanced, uh, interesting herbaceous elements, for sure. And uh, let's, let's, let's try the taste, shall we? drier, definitely drier. Uh, that is magnificent. Um, it's got these wonderful, wonderful uh, elements of, of, of stone fruits again coming through, but the, the, the minerality is much, much more prominent. Really, really crisp. There's something candied to it that I can't quite put my finger on, but the, 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 the acidity and the dryness balances out wonderfully. It's a really beautifully balanced wine. Excellent. Well, as is normally the case with us, uh, all of these wines are available both in-store and online. Um, please do follow our YouTube channel for uh, future videos and future updates to see me drink more uh, wonderful and exciting things. I'm sure at some point I will go through the more elite tier wines in the range and give you a little bit more on their tasting notes. But these are both on offer at the moment for really good prices, so please do pop on in and have a glass with us. Cheers.